This is sample 6-6, -6, turn on a banked road. I hope you've had a snack before watching this video because it's not an easy one. You may have to pause and go back. I guarantee I will have to pause and make some corrections to this as well. So here we are, a little bit more realistic situation than the last example, which was a turn on a flat road. Um, many freeway off-ramps as well as corners of racetracks are banked towards the middle of the curved path. And what we're gonna find here is that that can sustain a much faster speed. Um, I'm on page 242, by the way. As an example, the corners at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway are banked by 9.20 degrees. The radius of each corner is 256 meters. We're gonna find the fastest speed possible uh, if the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.550. So here's all we know up here in the top right corner, and we're going to determine the maximum speed possible here. So we start out with the free body diagram, which I've done here on the left. Uh, the, free, the three forces here are gravity acting straight down, uh, the normal force acting straight up. Now think about the static friction force, and we're going to use Fs max in all of these because we're looking for the maximum speed, which means we want the maximum amount of friction. So I might use Fs and Fs max interchangeably in this example, and that's why. What's friction keeping it from doing? It's keeping it from going up and out the side of the ramp. So uh, static friction is going to act in that direction, down the ramp. It's going to keep it from going up the ramp. So the free body diagram looks like this, with, um, which looks a lot like um, an inclined plane uh, with our angle theta there at the bottom. Uh, the gravitational force is all negative, okay? Um, we're going to keep, un unlike the inclined plane problems where we tilted our axes so that we had motion along the ramp, we're going to change things up a little bit because in this example here, the acceleration is going towards the center of the circle, straight in. So we're gonna keep our normal X and Y axes here. You can tilt them the other way, but I can only do this example once and I'm gonna do it this way. So if I do it this way, then gravity, we don't have to break up into components anymore, but we do have to split up Fs max and the normal force into its components. So. The axes I have down here on the left, um, acceleration is towards the center. Now to break up F, Fs max and the normal force into components, I've got triangles drawn on the next couple pages. Here's the triangle for Fs max. I've got, um, this is sort of a third quadrant vector, if you will, back from the free body diagram. So I've got it drawn here. The angle is with the horizontal here. So the X and Y components of Fs max are going to go along with sine and cosine as we're used to seeing them. So Fs max in the y direction, or the y component, excuse me, is Fs max sine theta, and the x component is Fs max cosine theta because we're measuring from the horizontal. So make a note of that. Now let's break up the normal force into its components. Oops, I went too far. Now, with normal force, just like on the inclined plane, we're back to measuring from the vertical. So we're going to have to flip-flop x, y, sine, and cosine. Um, I've drawn this here a little bit messy, but um, I've drawn all the thetas for you. Uh, so you can see that when we're looking at the normal force vector, we are measuring from the vertical. So our y component goes with cosine, and our x component goes with sine, um, which hopefully is getting a little bit comfortable. So those are the, the triangles for the normal force and for the frictional force. Now we're going to write our Newton's law equations. And I did this ahead of time just so that uh, I could explain it rather than write it while I was explaining it. Let's come back to the drawing. Okay, the y direction is straight up and down. The car is hopefully not going anywhere in either of those directions. So the sum of the y forces is zero. So what are the three y forces acting on this block? We have the normal force is acting upish, the gravitational force is acting straight down, and the static friction is acting in the down direction. So if we look at our free body diagram, normal force y component is up, gravity and the static friction force are both down. So that's why I have 
fn cosine theta, that's the normal force, minus the weight, minus the static friction equals zero. So I've just substituted the y component of the normal force for up, gravity for down, and static friction for down. Equal to zero, okay? No accelerating there. What about the x direction? Let's go back and look at that. The x, x is to the left. So if you look at fs, the static friction force, that's definitely leftish. And the normal force also leftish. Nothing acting to the right. Okay, gravity is straight down. So the static frictional force and the normal force will both be reinforcing each other. But remember, we do have a net force here. And, the, and then I've set it equal to mv squared over r because it is a centripetal force. It's keeping that car moving in a circle. So here's fs max cosine theta. That's the x component of the static friction. Here's fn sine theta. That is the x component of the normal force equals ma, which equals mv squared over r. Now, again, back to the back to the book. What are they asking for again? Oh, yeah, they're asking us to find the maximum speed. So at this point, I've got my formula number one and I've got my formula number two. I need a strategy, okay? So my strategy is down here at the bottom. Number one, I'm going to use the y equation to solve for the normal force, okay? It's not going to be pretty, but I can solve for the normal force. Then I'm going to plug that into my... Uh, my, excuse me, my fx expression <laughs> to find v. So that's my strategy, and we're going to continue on the next page with that. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to start with the y equation. We have fn cosine theta minus mg minus fs max sine theta equals zero. But remember, fs max is just mu, mu s times the normal force. So substituting there, I get fn cosine theta minus mg minus mu s fn, and then don't forget your sine theta, okay, equals zero. Okay. Factoring out an fn because I can, and because I know that's what I'm ultimately solving for, minus mu s sine theta, and bringing the mg over to the other side because it doesn't include the normal force, so we have Fn equals mg over cosine theta minus mu s times sine theta, and that's all in the denominator. Okay, is it pretty? No, but we've got an expression for Fn. So we're going to go on to the x equation, which was Fn times sine theta plus Fs max times cosine theta equals ma, which equals mv squared over r. Now at this point, I'm just going to delete this center part and we're just gonna work with the left and the right. So again, substituting for fs max, we have fn times sine theta plus mu s times fn times cosine theta equals mv squared over r remembering that the point of this was to substitute for the normal force, sine theta plus mu s cosine theta equals mv squared over r. All right, now it's time to plug in our expression for, for fn, which was mg over cosine theta minus mu s times sine theta, all of that in the denominator. All right now I've got to multiply this by sine theta plus mu s times cosine theta. Oh, I keep getting into a mess there. mv squared over r. Guess what cancels out the mass? Who's surprised? If you're surprised, you maybe haven't been paying attention. Okay, so v squared equals, what do I have over here? I have g is left upstairs, and I'm going to bring the r up. So gr, I'm going to keep my sine theta plus mu s cosine theta all of that over cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. I know we don't like to always keep it in terms of all these other expressions the whole time, but it worked out okay. And honestly, it gets a little messy if you start plugging in numbers places. So um, this is definitely the kind of equation that I'm going to plug these numbers in twice and make sure I get a decent uh, answer or the right answer twice in a row you get a velocity of 44 meters per second. So you can pause and make sure that you can substitute 
those numbers correctly. So that is, that's probably the toughest problem we do in AP Physics 1 is this banked road for a couple of reasons. Um, we start off with the, not tilting the axes, which we were kind of used to doing, but trust me, if you tilt the axes, then your acceleration is in a weird direction, and that makes it difficult to write your Newton's Law formulas, which are, excuse me, right here. So tilting the, the bank at an angle that you're not used to, I understand. Um, and just remembering that that static friction actually acts as a centripetal force. A couple of tough things there. We'll work it through together. And um, like I said, you'll probably have to watch this video a couple of times and it's already 11 minutes out of your life. But uh, thanks for watching and we'll discuss this uh, more in class.